Okay, electric potential energy. This is different to electric potential energy. I think I have a definition here. Yes, I do. of a charge Q is the energy that the charge possesses, double S, E, double S, E, S, is that right? Due to its position in an electric field. And that's analogous to uh, a mass in a gravitational field, of course. Gravitational potential energy is uh, the, the, the energy that a, that a mass has uh, by virtue of its position in that gravitational field. The electron volt, who's heard of the electron volt? Two, three, four, not so many. Who hasn't heard of the electron volt? Some, yeah, okay, some people, yeah. Just, I was just making sure that it wasn't because you weren't putting your hands up. The electron volt. Uh, this is, it's, it's little e capital V. One electron volt is the change in potential energy for an electron moved through a potential difference of one volt. Change in potential energy is equal to Q delta V, work equals Q delta V. Uh, in this case, the charge Q of an electron is 1.6 by 10 to the minus 19. Change in voltage times 1. I can do this calculation without the calculator. Change of potential energy is 1.6 by 10 to the minus 19. Of course, it's joules. And 1 EV is equal to 1.6 by 10 to the minus 19 joules. From that, you can see that the unit joules in energy is much larger than the unit EV in energy. But sometimes we like EV because sometimes we're talking about things that have very, very small amounts of energy, particles and the like. To convert joules to EV, Can anybody see what you do there? Wait, 
I'm sorry, what do you do? If I have a, some number and I multiply it by 1.6 by 10 to the minus 19, I make it quite small, don't I? Make it quite a small number. So, yeah. So, joules to EV divide. This is a, and I actually, in writing this, I stuffed this up before. Divide by 1.6. By 10 to the minus 19. So can you see, imagine, and I always picture it like this, if I had um, 2 EV, and, and this isn't an outrageous uh, number for a, for a particle that has a very small charge, so two, 2 electron volts, if I want to change to joules and I divide by 1.6 by 10 to the minus 19, I make a really small number, don't I? Uh, sorry, I make a really large number. Uh, if I multiply by 1.6 by 10 to the minus 19, then I make a really small number. Uh, joules is a much larger unit than EV. Okay, so joules to EV, joules to electron volts, divide by 1.6 by 10 to the minus 19. To convert EV to joules, Multiply by 1.6 by 10 to the minus 19. If I multiply by 1.6 by 10 to the minus 19, I make a really small number, which is going to be my number in joules. In order to do calculations with these formulae, you need to be in joules. EV doesn't work. Well, EV works, but it's in a different. It'll you'll get a uh, you'll get a number in a different unit. Units that don't exist. Uh, then I, for the other class, I drew this picture here, just for, just for the sake of, whoops, just for the sake of saying that you can do these plates vertically. I've never seen, or actually, have I ever seen? I don't know whether I ever have seen. I don't think I've ever seen the orientation of two parallel plates vertical. Uh, not in any, not in any questions. So far, we might have an electric field in this direction, oriented this way. Okay, I'll draw an electron, little electron. Electrons I usually draw blue, little negative charge on them. Little negative charge. If if the electron moves through a potential difference of 2,000 volts, it's energy. Changes by 2,000 EV. Look at a proton. I know protons are much bigger than that, but we'll just uh, for the sake of the diagram. If a proton moves through a potential difference of 500 volts, It's energy. Changes by 500 EV.
because a, a, a proton has the same charge as an electron, just opposite sign. And your text gives another example here. Two neutrons, two protons. What is it? Alpha particle, little alpha particle, or a helium nucleus, whatever you want to call it. Helium nucleus if you're in chemistry, alpha particle if you're in physics. Um, An alpha particle moves through a potential difference of 3,000 volts. Its energy changes by 6,000 EV. Because we have the charge of two protons there. Twice the proton charge. Some questions for you. They're easy. You need not worry today. Easy questions. Well, maybe not easy, but um, actually, I shouldn't show you that part. Uh, maybe not easy questions, but. Oh. Uh, certainly. Um, good practice, anyway. Here we go. So here we have a charge of 5 millicoulombs, milli meaning 10 to the minus 3 coulombs, experiences a force of 0.2 newtons in an electric field. It has moved a distance of 20 centimetres against this force. Find the potential difference through which the charge has moved. To find this potential difference through which the charge has moved, what do you need to know? If we if we come back up here, potential difference. You need to know the work done on that particle, okay? In order to find the work done on that particle, well, I leave it to you. I'll give you a second to have a go at that. Okay, uh, work is measured in joules, it's an energy, force times distance, the force is 0 0.2 newtons, the distance is 0 0.2 metres, 20 centimetres, 0 0.04 joules, so we're in the right unit here to do any more calculations, uh, if I then want to know uh, delta V, equals work per unit charge, which equals 0 0.04 joules divided by, what is it, 5 millicoulombs, 5 by 10 to the minus 3 coulombs, and somebody's got a value of 8. Thank you. Volts or joules per coulomb is fine. Uh, C is a capital C, just, just to remind you that it is capital, capital for coulombs. We'll go straight into another question by the looks of things. Yes.
I'll include that there, actually. We got this one. An electron is accelerated from rest through a potential difference of 2,000 volts. So we have here an electron. Through a potential difference of 2,000 volts. So uh, I might have a positive side and a negative side over here and the, the difference between those two is 2,000 volts. It's going to accelerate to the right. Find its kinetic energy in electron volts and in joules. So 2,000 volts. Uh, we, and we're going to say 2,000 EV. Okay, for the electron. Uh, 2,000 multiplied by 1.6 by 10 to the minus 19. And a student said, very quickly, multiply the 2 by 1.6 and we get 3.2. Multiply the minus 19 by three zeros, 1,000, we get by 10 to the minus 16, which is correct. Joules. Too easy? Here we have another situation where where we have a potential difference between two plates and we know the distance between the plates. The work done on a particle moving through between those plates is equal to force times distance. Work equals force times distance. And we also know that from that we can say work is equal to force, which is EQ. And I'm going to ch change displacement to D here. It's what your text does, and I'll, I'll stick with that. So F is, e F is equal to EQ. S is now equal to D. We've got the same uh, equation there, essentially. We also know that W is equal to Q multiplied by delta V. Therefore, from that, I'm going to equate the two. Q delta V is equal to EQD. The Q's cancel. We're left with E is equal to delta V on D. I can calculate the magnitude of the electric field between these two plates if I know the potential difference between the two and the distance between them. What units has the electric field or another unit for the electric field? Remember, we, we were also saying before uh, F equals 
EQ, so E equals F on Q, is Newtons per Coulomb. Newtons per Coulomb. Uh, what units has E here? Yeah, thank you. Four volts per meter. Have a go at this. This one's really easy. Yeah. Uh, electric field strength E. Get the right colour. E equals <clears throat> delta V on D which is 800 volts, 0 0.2. 800 divided by 2 is 400 times 4,000. 4,000 volts per metre. <coughs> That's good. Acceleration, this is where we're getting to projectile motion. In a constant electric field. Most of the electric fields that we look at are going to be constant. It's the easiest way to look at an electric field. The force is equal to EQ. Force is also equal to MA, Newton's second law. Uh, if that's true, this is uh, true for charges. in electric fields. If they're both true, then I can equate them. EQ equals MA. From that, A is equal to EQ on M. Motion parallel or anti-parallel to the field. Whoops, that doesn't look right, does it? Let's have a look at this situation one more time. We have parallel plates, maybe infinite, I'm not sure please and uh, 
a potential difference between those two plates and hence an electric field. You notice I'm, I'm trying to keep the colours the same for each of the representations that I draw. So electric fields will be blue. Uh, let's put a proton in there. Here. And let's put one here. I've chose those arbitrarily except for the fact that they're on opposite sides. And I'm going to say that they're both positive. And one side is positive and one side is negative. What happens? Well, you probably, you, you, everyone can see that uh, they, they know that the, and I should be drawing arrows on these fields as well, but I won't, but it takes too long. But, um, okay, so this one's going to want to go in this direction, isn't it? Straight up. Okay, forget about gravity at this stage, but it will come into play later. Forget about gravity. It's just going to want to, <clears throat> this proton is going to want to accelerate to the negative plate. And this proton here will want to stay exactly where it is. What if I give it a kick? with a really small boot <coughs> and what's that yeah it's, but what if what if I, I give it a kick and and I don't know what that kick's going to do uh, the kick might be enough that it hits the positive plate and then returns back down or well, the kick might only be enough that it gets so high and then comes straight back down to the negative plate I don't know I'm going to need to know several things for that. Um, let's draw the, the field. Of course, if I put a small positive test charge, it's going to go in this direction. And uh, just for the sake of occasionally, if, you're, if you guys are asked to draw a field, you need to draw the arrows in. That's what you get that last point in. Um, the last point will be for drawing arrowheads on the, on the field lines. So... In order to find out what will happen to the particle, the proton, We find the acceleration the acceleration first using A equals EQ on M and then use the laws of motion. Because remember, this proton's going to behave just like a mass in a gravitational field, except gravitational field on Earth is fixed. Uh, the electric field, uh, this potential difference might be varying. Uh, this potential difference might be connected to a potentiometer, which uh, makes it, you can turn it up or down, okay? So in each case, the acceleration is going to be different. Ah... Uh, your homework is not going to fit on that page. I'll leave that up for a second. Have a look at this situation. Two large flat parallel plates have a potential difference of 200 volts applied to them. The plates are 10 centimetres apart. An alpha particle initially adjacent to the positive plate accelerates towards the negative plate. Find the time, I think they mean the alpha particle here, takes to move between the plates. The final velocity of the alpha particle, just before it hits the negative plate, they give you uh, delta V, D, and charge on an alpha particle is 3.2 by 10 to the minus 19. That's two times the charge of a, a single proton, 1.6 by 10 to the minus 19. Okay, 
Uh, and the mass of the alpha particle they give you, of course, you'd have to add up two protons and two neutrons and their masses to get this. They give it to you just to make, just for ease. Do the calculation. Work, work that out. Okay. 